In this lesson, we're going to look at prime numbers and composite numbers. So first of all, a prime number is a number that is larger than 1 and is only divisible by 1 and itself. A composite number is a number that is larger than 1 that is not prime. So all numbers bigger than 1 that don't fall into the prime category we call composite. So to just get an idea of um, what it means for a number to be prime, let's look at this first example here that asks us to list the first nine prime numbers. So um, of course it's got to be larger than one, so we can check two. And of course two fits the definition because the only factors of two are one and two, right? One in itself. So two is the first prime. Let's check three. Well, three, only one and three are factors of three. So, um, so that's a prime. Four, well, one and four are factors, but so is two. So since there's a number besides one in itself that divides into four, um, it is not prime, and so therefore we call it composite. How about five? Well, yeah, five, only one and five divide into five evenly. Six, no, two goes into six evenly. Three goes into six evenly, so it's definitely composite. Seven, right? only one and seven divide into seven evenly, so it's a prime. You might start noticing a pattern here. Notice I skipped my even number here, I skipped my even number here. And in fact, we can just know ahead of time that every even number that's bigger than two is going to be composite because, by definition, two divides into an even number. All right, so two's the only prime number in existence. So I'm not even gonna think about eight, I'm skipping right up to nine. Is nine prime? Well, three goes into nine evenly, right? Three times three is nine, so nine is composite. We, of course, skip 10. How about 11? Well, 11 is prime because only one and 11 go into it. 13 is also prime. Only one and 13 are factors. 15, however, five goes into 15, three goes into 15, so it's composite. Jump up to 17. Only 1 and 17 go in, so that's prime. 19 is also prime. 21 is composite, right? Because we know from our multiplication facts that 3 times 7 is 21. All right, so our ninth prime here on our list is 23. All right, so this just gives us an idea of, of primes to think about, um, these first nine. Um, now, in, notice in these next two examples, I ask us to determine if a couple of larger numbers are prime or composite. So we probably don't want to just continue this list on and wait till we work our way up to numbers about uh, as large as 151 and 91. So here's a two-step process we can take for figuring out if these numbers are prime or not. So first of all, we're going to find the largest prime number whose square is less than your number. Okay, so the largest prime number whose square is less than 151. Well, let's just grab a few of these. Um, first of all, seven squared is 49, so we know we need to get bigger because 49 is a lot uh, less than 151. So let's try 11 squared. 11 squared, is of course, 11 times 11, which is 121. You might need to do a little scratch work to get that. So 121 is less than 151, but we want to know if there's another prime that's bigger whose square is less than 151. So let's try 13. And that's going to give us 169. Again, a little scratch work might be necessary. So that's too large. So it turns out that 11 is the largest prime number that is that has a square that is smaller than 151. So what step number two says is we're going to check every prime from two. Oops, check primes. That's what I need to say there. From two up to the number we found in step one. So our number from step one is 11. So from two up to 11. Okay. I'm fix my p there. All right. So. Um, so let's just talk about what we're doing here. We're trying to figure out if any numbers, uh, any prime numbers between 2 and 11 divide into 151 evenly. And the conclusion here is that if none of them do, 
then 151 is definitely prime. And if one of them does, of course, it's not because it has a factor besides one in itself. Okay, so why do we only have to check 2 to 11? Okay, well, the idea here is that, you know, if something bigger than 11 uh, went into 151, uh, the number that paired with that number larger than 11 would have to definitely be smaller than 11. Okay. So in order for two things to multiply together to make 151, um, if you had something bigger than 11, it's pair would have to be smaller than 11, since 11 is the one whose square is closest to 151. So that means we would have already found it in our list from 2 to 11. Okay. Um, so let's go ahead and go through this process. So we have, uh, let's start with 2. Of course, 2 doesn't uh, doesn't work because 151 is not even. So let's check 3. So we have 151 divided by 3. 3 goes into 15 five times. Drop the 1, um, but then 3 does not go into 1. Of course, we put a 0 there, and so we have 50 with a remainder of 1, but the important part is we have a remainder. So it does not divide into 151 evenly. Okay. Now again, why don't we have to check 4? Um, why are we only checking the primes? Well, because a composite number has factors that are less than it um, that are prime numbers. So um, you know, if 4 uh, divided into 151, 2 would have also. Okay, so that's why we're only having to check prime numbers because we would have already found a prime less than a composite um, that would have also gone into 151. So we skip 4, the next prime is 5. Of course, 5 doesn't go into 151 because uh, 151 does not end in 5 or 0. So cross that off the list. There's no real nice um, tests for 7, so we're just going to have to try it out. 7 goes into 15 twice. Remainder 1, drop the 1 down. 7 goes into 11 once, but then we're going to have a remainder of 4. So 7 doesn't work since there's a remainder. So the only other prime is 11. So if 11 fails, then we can conclude that 151 is prime. 11 goes into 15 once. 11 goes into 41 three times, and we definitely have a remainder. So what we can say is that 151 is prime. For our second example of 91, well, we know that 11 squared is 121, that's too big. 7 squared is 49, which is below 91. So uh, all we have to do is check 2, 3, 5, and 7. And if all these fail, 91 is prime. So of course, 2 does not go into 91 evenly because this is an odd number. Um, I can actually say that 3 doesn't. Um, I didn't use this trick up here, but remember we have the trick of if you add the digits of the number up and they add up to something that's not divisible by 3, then the number's not divisible by 3. So 9 plus 1 is 10, and since 10 is not divisible by 3, neither is 91. Um, 91 does not end in a 5 or 0, so 5 can't go into it. So the only hope for 91 is, to, is if 7 divides into it evenly. So we'll check that out. 7 goes into 9 once, 7 goes into 21 three times, and so since there's a remainder of 0, 7 is a factor of 91, so that means that 91 is composite.